When you think about it, Slavs don't really come to mind, but their influence on the medieval world was immense. From raiding Constantinople to killing the Doge of Venice, all the way from forcing the people of Sweden, Norway and Denmark to alter their settlements and depopulate their regions. Now they have been a bit obscured by history, we don't really know much about them, but today I'm going to be talking about the Vens that were right on the border of Denmark that terrorized the Baltic, and I'm also going to be talking about the Narentians that used to terrorize the Adriatic Sea for over five centuries. So who exactly were the Slavic pirates? The Nerentines, also known as Neretljani or Nerentani, was a Slavic tribe that inhabited the region of Narenta, which is Neretva, today's river. Who they exactly were is really hard to say because they were independent, they were under Byzantine rule, they were under the Principality of Serbia, they were under the Croatian Kingdom, but we do know for 100% certain that they were Slavic tribes, South Slavic tribes, that had terrorized the region. Other than the Nerentians, they were known as the Paganoi or the Pagans or the Pagani because they didn't accept Christianity for a really long time despite a lot of the other South Slavic peoples accepting Christianity. As we may know the Slavs had overwhelmed the Balkans completely by the 6th century and in the 7th century they had reached this area of the Neretva river. There was a flourishing Roman city there known as Narona that was completely burned and destroyed, burned to the ground and upon the Roman temple ruins the Slavs had built a new temple to Svetovit which was a major religious site for the South Slavs. It was very similar to Rugen all the way back in North Europe. Now, we know that uh, pirate activity started already in the 7th century, but we don't really know all that much how the shipbuilding process worked because, you know, the Slavs were not exactly known as maritime people. We have some scant resources that they used ships that were very similar to Viking longships and they could use them quite successfully. After the 7th century, we have a little bit of a blank period, but we know around the 9th century, 200 years of wars between the Narentians and Venice started, and it was constantly just attacks, wars, peace treaties, and this was constantly changing. Interestingly enough, around the 9th century, there was a pretty big problem with Arab invasions as they had conquered many of the surrounding regions, and most importantly, they had tied down the Venetian fleets, which was like an open invite for the Neretians to start raiding, so every time the fleet was tied down, they would invade, they would go back, when the fleet came back, they would return, they would attack again, and there were constantly peace treaties coming back and again and again, but it was constantly just raiding all the time. Now, in 1839, the Venetians decided to send actual warships to Slavic lands, and they had, as we know, made a peace treaty with a Nerentine leader known as Drosaiko, or as Drashko in Slavic languages, but we don't really know how legit this peace treaty was, if this was just one tribe, because we know they had warred just one year later. In 1840, they had attacked a Nerentine leader known as Ljudislav, who not only defeated the Doge of Venice, but also killed hundreds of his men. Now, at this time, around this time, era attacks became even more intense, which completely destroyed the power of Venice and they could no longer deal with the Slavs, which increased the raids and they started raiding very, very close, right at the doorstep of Venice itself. In 1880, 40 years later, Venice got into open conflict with Nerentines once again and Nerentines actually managed to kill the 16th Doge of Venice in open battle, which was the first time a doge died in battle in all of history. As we know, later down the line, the Nerentines were under Byzantine rule. They were forcefully converted, but they never really managed to convert. That is why they were known as the Pagans. Then they were under the rule of Principality of Serbia, under the rule of Croatia, but nonetheless, they constantly continued their pirate activities. Most importantly, they had continued to be a huge thorn in the side of Venice for nearly 200 years. Around the 11th century, they actually managed to force Venice to pay tribute to them, but over time, Venice got more power, they managed to completely get rid of the Nerentines, and as we know, they slowly started disappearing from all the historical sources, but nonetheless, they had five centuries of constant pirate activity. Now, the Nerentines weren't just pirates, we know they grew olives, they herded cattle, but piracy was their main activity, that is how they actually made money, and they were quite successful not just at piracy, but slave trade, and they flourished for hundreds of years. 
Up north, we have an even more interesting phenomena, the winds, which were quite the pirates. And to call them just pirates would really be underwhelming because that is exactly the same as saying that the Vikings were just a pirate nuisance, not a force that terrorized Europe, because the winds were quite a threat. Now, the winds were not exactly people. That is a Germanic name. That is what the Germanic people had called them. And this was a various Western Slavic tribes and also other Slavic tribes that the Germanics just bunched them up into the winds. Interesting enough, they were actually quite urbanized at the time. They had more cities than Sweden in the 11th century, and today's cities are actually Vendish of Vendish origin. For example, we have Oldenburg in Germany, which was Stadigrad. We have Lubice, which was Lübeck. Most interestingly, they built a significant pagan Slavic temple on the island of Rugen at the Cape of Arcona that was notable to all the Slavs in the region, and it was incredibly influential. Their power centered around cities, fortresses known as Grad, and usually they were ruled by a Knez or a Knaz, which was something akin to a prince. Now, how exactly did they get into piracy and why do we even know them as pirates? Well, I'd say a big part of that is just the influence of the Baltic region in general because the, they used fire with fire to fight the Vikings. So by all accounts, the Vents were Vikings, they just weren't Germanic people. We know they pretty much used the exact same longships. They have actual archaeological excavations where they had discovered Vents ships, which were pretty much identical to general Viking longships. Naturally, they would use smaller ships, speedy and mobile ones, they would do hit and runs, they would use lightly armored warriors as well as cavalry, and they would mount very fast raids and they would escape very quickly. They raided Norway, Denmark, especially the Denmark that soon became their main enemy and ultimately their demise. We know that the people of Sweden, Norway and Denmark started making some serious defenses against the raids as they feared them, they depopulated the coastal region, they erected stakes and we have noted stakes as far as the lakes in Sweden even though we don't really know whether they attacked them or not. Now when I say raids I don't mean just lone wolves attacking some tiny village with two people although that probably happened as well. Some of these raids were absolutely gigantic. We know on one occasion the Vendish leader Ratibor had used 550 ships and 25,000 men. Of course, a medieval exaggeration, but it was no doubt a large force. And we know that they had completely destroyed the Norwegian city that it never completely recovered after that raid. Pirate raids, raids, Viking activities became a problem for quite a few years, so Denmark decided to put a stop to them. They exploited their lack of unity and they used them and pitted the vents against each other that ultimately lowered their power. Then German pressure from below caused even more decline and ultimately the vents were defeated on multiple occasions. They tried to push Christianity upon them. A lot of the vents didn't want to accept Christianity because they thought it was a way for the German oppression, German invasion, but on some occasions they accepted that Christianity took over with the peace treaties, then completely abandoned Christianity, and the Danish didn't even really care. They just wanted peace, they didn't want the raids. Ultimately, though, there was something akin to a pretty big crusade that ultimately destroyed the Vents. The Danish came to the island of Rugen, they destroyed the temple at Arcona, and ultimately, the Vents were put to an end. From this time, the kings of Sweden and Denmark had used the title the King of the Vents. They actually only stopped using it some 50 years ago, but the Vents were a pretty significant Baltic force back in the medieval times. They were essentially the Vikings after the Vikings, and they were quite influential upon that entire region. Other than the Vents, we, for example, know of the Rus that had actually managed to raid Constantinople, but I wouldn't really call the Rus in this entire area of the East Slavs pirates because this was during the Viking Age, there were actual Vikings involved but there were some pretty serious pirate activities around this region as well. Thank you for watching, check out the video on the Wild Hunt in The Witcher and also subscribe to the channel for more videos. See you next time!